Dementia isn't simply forgetting where you placed your keys. It's like a puzzle where the pieces slowly disappear, affecting the person's ability to remember, think, and even feel the passage of time. Dementia is an umbrella term for any type of major neurocognitive disorder that affects memory and function. The four most common types of dementia include Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, Lewy body dementia, and frontal temporal dementia. In this Med Mastery lesson, we will cover how to identify and diagnose each of these diseases. Let's start with Alzheimer's disease, the most common type of dementia encountered clinically. While the development of Alzheimer's has a genetic component, several factors that can influence the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease are within our control, allowing us to modify or influence them through lifestyle choices and managing specific health conditions. The clinical hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease include being older at diagnosis with a slow and progressive decline in memory and function over several years. Vascular dementia is the second most common type of dementia seen clinically. The key sign of this disease is a memory decline linked to one or more cerebral vascular events, like a stroke. Unlike Alzheimer's, the onset is abrupt and progression follows a pattern characterized by a series of distinct and noticeable steps of decline. Because it's associated with cerebral vascular events, vascular dementia is identified using neuroimaging with CT, or computed tomography, or MRI, that is, magnetic resonance imaging. Early in disease, patients are more likely to have focal neurologic deficits, like one-sided weakness of an arm or facial droop, gait disorder, and urinary symptoms, in addition to memory impairment. Many patients will have features of both Alzheimer's and vascular dementia. If the patient does not fit neatly into one clinical picture, it is likely they have mixed pathology disease. The next most common type of dementia is Lewy body. A Lewy body is an abnormal protein cluster that can develop inside nerve cells. Unlike Alzheimer's and vascular dementia, it has a set of strict diagnostic criteria, including newly arising measurable cognitive deficits with functional decline, plus at least two of the following symptoms at the time of diagnosis. Parkinsonian findings like shuffling gait, rigidity, or dysphagia, fluctuations in cognition from day to day or even hour to hour, well-formed visual hallucinations, and or REM sleep disorder, the physical and verbal acting out of dreams, which typically predates the onset of cognitive decline by years. Severe sensitivity to antipsychotic medications with exaggerated extrapyramidal side effects, such as rigidity and bradykinesia, may suggest Lewy body, but is not included in the diagnostic criteria. The last form of dementia we will review is frontal temporal dementia, or FTD, which is caused by the atrophy of the frontal and temporal lobes of the brain. It is what I call a tale of two dementias because it involves two distinct subtypes, the behavioral variant and the primary progressive aphasia variant. Behavioral variant FTD is characterized by impaired reasoning and executive function early in disease, out of proportion with the decline in memory. This results in impulsivity or compulsive behaviors that may be drastic and often cause rifts in interpersonal relationships. This type of FTD often affects people early in their 50s or 60s. The clinical hallmark of primary progressive aphasia variant FTD is impaired language deficits out of proportion to decline in memory. These can be motor speech deficits, difficulty getting words out, word or object comprehension deficits, inability to recall the meaning of a word or what something's called, or word retrieval errors or word substitutions. The first steps in diagnosis of all forms of dementia are cognitive and functional assessments. The next steps are to take a thorough history and perform a neurologic exam, looking for hallmarks of disease. Before giving a diagnosis, you'll need to complete a workup for potential reversible causes of cognitive impairment, including hypothyroidism, vitamin B12 deficiency, HIV, tertiary syphilis, or depression. 
And while you may want to order head imaging to look for evidence of vascular disease, imaging is not required to make a diagnosis of dementia. Once the workup has been completed, you will be able to give a formal diagnosis specific to the type of dementia your patient has, which will allow you to develop an appropriate treatment plan. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.